Hi everyone, this is Medina, a car artist and video game developer. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through my process of how we can approach texturing leather. We'll create two types of leather using a non-destructive approach, and then we'll combine those two to create a quick third variation. This tutorial is suitable for absolute beginners, and I'll do my best to show you how easy it is to use Substance Painter for character assets. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can create this type of leather. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look if we can find a good base for a material and substance source. I'm going to bring in my substance launcher and I'll go to the leather section. Have my reference close. Let's check this one. No. At this point, I'm looking to find a type of grain that is similar to my reference. Let's have a look at this one. No. Same here. This one is perhaps a bit too grainy. Maybe this one. That's not too bad, but the shape of the grains might be a bit different from my reference. I think this one should work. Yes, I'm going to download this one and save it on my computer. Let's go ahead and delete this group so that we can start from scratch. Bring in your shell and drag and drop the material which has downloaded. In the pop-up window, specify your resource as a base material and I'm going to import it to my shell. Here's our base material. Drag and drop it as our first layer and bring in your reference close. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the tiling of the material. Maybe a little bit more. That's not too bad. Next, let's have a look at the color. You can switch the preview to base color so that it's easier to see. It looks like the crevices are slightly brighter, no matter what values we're choosing. Let's see if there are any parameters that allow us to control the crevices color. We have luminosity, contrast, hue shift, saturation. This one's control the height and the normals. Just gonna hit undo a few times. So it looks like there is no way to control the color of the crevices. In a case like this, I'll go ahead and turn off the color input of the material altogether. I'll use this material only as a base for leather grain normals and roughness. To control the color, I'll create a separate layer that will allow me to adjust the color of the crevices and a separate layer that will allow me to adjust the top color of the grains. Let's have a look at how we can do that. Go to the Layers tab and create a fill layer. That's going to be our concave color. Disable everything except color and change the color to dark brown. I'll go ahead and sample it directly from the reference so that I have something as a starting point. All right. Create another fill layer. That's going to be our convex color. Disable everything except color. 
and choose a color for the top surface of the grains. All right. Now, what I'll need to do is I'll need to set up a mask that will only pick up the very top areas of the grains. To do that, I'm going to use an edge mask with an anchor point. Go to the layer that holds the leather grain bump, right click and choose Add Anchor Point. There we go, here's the name of our anchor point, same as the layer. Next, go to the convex color and bring in your shelf. Go to the Smart Masks and choose an edge mask. I'm going to go with the edge strong. Drag and drop it to the convex color layer. You can hold Alt and click on the mask to see the mask view. Now, as you can see, the mask is picking up the edges of our main baked mesh textures. The mask is not yet taking into account our leather grain bump. We need to point the mask to this anchor point so that the mask can take into account the bump information that is coming from the base layer. Select the mask and go to the mask editor. Scroll all the way down, click on micro normal and select our anchor point. Find the micro details tab and set micro normal to true. Still nothing. Scroll down again and set the reference channel to normal. There we go. We can now adjust the top surface of the grains. Feel free to play with the parameters of the mask as well. In my case, it feels like the mask is a bit too harsh. I'll try and adjust it with the balance and blue parameters that are available in the mask. That's much better. This sharpen filter came along with our smart mask, but it doesn't seem to do much, so I'll just delete it. All right, I'm going to experiment with the color some more and check how it looks with a different lighting. Next thing I want to do is to add some color variation. If you look at the reference, you can see that there are some patches here and there. We could add those to our diffuse to make the base a bit more interesting. I'm going to use a fill layer with a procedural mask to drive the pattern of the patches. Create a fill layer. I'm going to name it Large Color Variations. Turn off all the channels except colored. You can click on the base color and look for some noise textures. If it's difficult to see, go to the shelf and browse through the textures there. I'm going to try this Clouds 2 texture. Adjust the tiling and play with different blending modes till you find something that works. I'll try a few blending modes and see what looks good. You can also press the arrow down key to quickly cycle through the modes. I think Color Dodge works well in my case. 
I'm looking for a very subtle color variation, so I will lower the global intensity of the layer. All right, that's not too bad. I feel that the top areas of the grains are a bit too shiny at the moment. We can quickly adjust that by going to our convex color layer and turning on the roughness channel. I'm going to increase my roughness to make the grains less shiny. That's a bit better. Let's see how it looks with a different lighting. Yes, not too bad. So another thing I would like to do is to emphasize the edges of the jacket. If you look at our reference, notice how the edges have a much smoother surface than the rest of the jacket. There's almost no small bump on them. Let's have a look at how we can express that. Create a fill layer. Turn off everything except color, roughness and normal. Now, I would like this layer not to have any bump information that is coming from our leather grains. So I'll set the blending mode of my normal channel to replace. There we go. Next, click on the layer and add a mask. Right click on the mask and add a generator. Click on the generator and choose curvature. That will give us a mask based on our curvature map that we baked in the beginning of our project. We can adjust the global balance to narrow the mask down. I'm going to adjust the color and the intensity of the layer. Make sure that you switch to your channel to base color when adjusting the intensity of the layer. I think the edge mask is a bit too large at the moment, so I'm going to narrow it down a bit. That's not too bad. Play with the global balance and global blur till you're happy with the results. I'm going to make it a bit more subtle and lower the intensity of the color. And perhaps let's adjust the roughness to make the edges pop a bit more. I'm going to rename the layer to something that makes sense. I think I would still like a bit of bump coming through, so I'm going to decrease the intensity of my normal. All right. Now, as you can see, the mask has picked up some of our wrinkles. Let's go ahead and remove that. I'm going to switch to the base color view so that it's easier to see. Right click on the mask and choose Add Paint. Make sure the paint is selected. Choose a paint tool with black color selected and start painting out the mask from the areas that don't need the edge mask.
Let's see what we have. All right, that's looking good. Our base is now ready. In our next lesson, we're going to look at how we can refine the roughness of our jacket.